What's up everybody? In this video, I'll be showing you how to get every single accessory in Block's Fruits. So I'm talking about everything in the first, second, and third C. I'll be going over where to get them, what they look like, and what they do for you. This is going to be a long video, so let's get into it. Of course, we'll be starting off in the first C. If you'd like to skip ahead to a different C, use the timestamps down below. The first accessories I'll be showing you is the pink coat. This coat gives you an extra 200 health along with 10% more gun damage. So, if you're using a gun build early on, this accessory is great for it. Start off by heading to the prison. Then you'll find the swan boss in the middle of the island. Defeating him will give you a chance at getting the coat. I don't have it myself, since I never farmed this boss too much. But early on, he may be hard, so just be careful. The next item is the black cape. This can be bought from an NPC at the Marine Fortress. Using this cape will give you an extra 100 energy, 100 health, and 5% more damage. So it's actually really good, and it's pretty cheap. At the Marine Fortress, head to this first watchtower on the right side of the island. Inside the watchtower at the top, there will be a hole you can jump into. Most people didn't know about this, including myself, so make sure to do this since the accessory is really good. Once inside, Parlus will be here waiting. You'll need 50,000 cash, and you'll need to be level 50 in order to buy it. And that's all you need for it. Here's how it looks in game. In my opinion, it's kinda ugly, but it's up to you if you wanna get this or not. On to the next accessory. This one is actually on the same island. In the middle, where the giant building is, the Vice Admiral boss will spawn here. Killing him will have a chance at dropping the coat. That's the name, just coat. There's actually a cool Easter egg within this accessory, and it depends what team you're playing on. If you're a Marine and you kill him, you'll get the Marine coat, like I have here. But if you're a pirate and you get it, you'll get the same coat, but red and with a skull. If you watched One Piece, you'd immediately understand the reference behind the pirate coat. Anyways, this coat gives you 200 more energy and 10% more melee damage. And while I was doing this, Greybeard spawned. I ended up helping some lower level people kill him, since he's pretty tough. Anyways, let's move on to the next accessory. You're gonna have to head to the Fountain Island for this one. This accessory is the Cool Shades and it's dropped by the boss at the Fountain Island. These shades give you 100 extra energy and health, along with 7.5% more damage and a 17.5% movement speed increase. So, they're just basically the worser version of the Swan Shades from the second C, but in the first C, this is probably the best accessory. Now, let's move on to the Marine Cap. This one is a bit harder to obtain, since you'll have to kill a pirate as a marine only after your honor level is above 250,000. This accessory gives you 7.5% increase to sword and gun damage, and it also removes 10% of the cooldown on all sword and gun attacks. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the worst accessory in the first C at least, since nobody uses guns it's only good for sword users and even then, there are much better alternatives for sword users. For the next accessory, the Swordsman Hat. It can be found at the desert island in a secret tunnel. Head into this hole by the pyramid. Usually there's a chest here, so you'll have to collect it. Then, in the hole, just follow it till the end until you find Hassan, who will sell you the hat for 150,000 cash. There are a few requirements, though, along with the cash. You'll have to have unlocked Flash Step aura, and air jump, and you'll also need 300 stat points in sword, which I did not have, so I couldn't buy the hat. This next accessory can be found in the Sky Islands, specifically the second cloud. This one is called the Tomo Ring, and it simply gives you a 10% boost to Block's Fruit's damage. It's that simple. On the second cloud, you can find the NPC selling this ring, on this church-like building. You'll need at least 200 points in melee, and he'll sell it to you for 500,000 cash. Here's what it looks like. 
This is probably my favorite looking accessory in the first C. I just think it's really cool. Anyways, on to the final accessory, Usopp's hat. Like the marine cap, you need to kill people to unlock this hat. Specifically, you need to kill three people around your level and you have to be a pirate with a bounty over 250,000. This hat will give you a 7.5% increase to gun damage and a 15% reduction to all gun cooldowns. So yeah, not much for me to say about this. Let's move on to the second C now. Here we are now. Starting off, we have the black spiky coat. This coat gives you an extra 200 health and energy along with a 7.5% damage increase. You can get this from killing Jeremy, a boss located on top of this mountain. From the spawn of the second sea, just go towards the right and you'll end up here. The next accessory is the blue spiky coat. Not sure why there's so many spiky coats in this game, but this is the best one. You can get it from killing the cursed captain, which can be found in the ship next to the graveyard island. The cursed captain spawns every third night, just enter his ship and he'll be there. Killing him will give you the coat. This coat gives you 500 energy, 200 health, and a 7.5% damage increase. Now, the red spiky coat, much like the blue, can only be obtained through killing the cursed captain, and he'll have a chance to drop you one of these two coats. The red spiky coat gives you the same 7.5% damage increase along with 500 health and 250 energy. These next two accessories can only be obtained through killing sea beasts. One of them is the chopper hat, which will give you a 3% buff to all blocks fruit damage, a 15% blocks fruit attack cooldown reduction, and a 10% defense increase to all blocks fruit attacks. While on the other hand, the top hat will give you an extra 3% melee damage, 10% reduced skill cooldowns, and a 10% increased sword defense. The next accessory is the Ghoul Mask. This can be bought using Ectoplasm in the Ghost Ship. If you don't know what Ectoplasm is, basically it's the currency you use to buy stuff inside the Ghost Ship. There are a few different things, along with a race you can buy with Ectoplasm, so it's pretty important. If you head to this bedroom and talk to this guy, you can buy the Ghoul Mask for 50 Ectoplasm. The Ghoul Mask will give you 500 energy, a 10% boost to Life Leech when using melee on other players, and if you don't know what Life Leech is, it's something you can use when using the Ghoul Race, and it basically steals health from other people whenever you use a melee item. The Mask also gives an increased 2.5% Life Leech on attacks against NPCs, and it also gives you a 35% boost to your movement speed. This is best paired with the Ghoul Race and Buddha, since Buddha is mainly used with melee, and the mask only works well with the Ghoul Race because of Life Leech. Hopefully that wasn't too much to explain, so let's get into the next accessory. For the Warrior Helmet, you'll need to complete the Colosseum Quest which you can start by talking with Bartilo in the cafe. I won't be going too much into detail with this, but basically you first need to be level 850, then talk to Bartilo in the cafe. He'll ask you to kill 50 swan pirates. After doing it, talk to him again, and he'll ask you to kill Jeremy, which is the boss I told you about earlier. Then he'll ask you to rescue the gladiators. Head to the Colosseum, and under it, in this room, there'll be a code you have to enter. I put it in the chat so it's easier for you to see, but the code is Y, infinity symbol, C, S, M, F, N, and B. Once you do this, the quest will be finished, and you'll have unlocked the helmet, which will give you a 12% increase to all melee and sword damage and a 5% melee and sword cooldown reduction. This quest is very important for many things other than the helmet, so make sure you complete it. I'll be going over these next few accessories quickly. The Swan Glasses is obtained through killing Don Swan, a boss you can unlock by feeding Trevor, an NPC in the mansion, a devil fruit worth over one million. Then, he'll unlock the basement, where you can fight Don Swan. 
These glasses give you 25% more movement speed, plus 8% more damage, 8% reduced skill cooldowns, plus 8% more defense, and an extra 250 energy and health. The Zebra Cap is pretty difficult to unlock. You need to complete the Order Raid or Law Raid, whatever you want to say, to complete it. Head to the hot side of the hot and cold island, and on top of this giant rock, there's a secret path into a lab. Here, you can do the raid. To get the microchip to activate the raid, head to this building, which has the Smoke Admiral inside, and behind it, there's a secret path to an NPC, who will sell you the microchip for 1,000 fragments. Use the microchip in the secret lab to do the raid, and you'll get this hat. This hat gives you 10% more sword damage, as well as reducing Block's fruit skill cooldowns by 15%. It also gives you 500 energy and 100 health. The Dark Coat is the rarest non-event item in Block's fruits. The only way to get it is by killing Dark Beard, who can only be spawned using the Fist of Darkness. To get the Fist of Darkness, you'll either have to get it from killing a sea beast or finding it in a chest. Both have super low chances of it spawning. If you want a good method to getting it quickly, watch my last video, where I explain the best way to get it. Once you have the Fist, bring it to this island, by the Ice Castle Island, and put it into this altar, which will spawn Dark Beard. And even then, it's still a low chance to get the coat. This coat will give you 600 energy and health, along with 15% more blocks fruit damage. Now, it's time to move on to the third C. I'll be talking about two main accessories and its variants. These are the bandana and the hunter's cape. Both of these accessories have three variants, a black, green, and red style. You can get these all from killing elite pirates. You can find these pirates by going to this cat NPC on the castle island, and he'll tell you the location of one of three elite pirate. You should know that these have a 10 minute cooldown, so he may not tell you the location every time. Killing an elite pirate has a chance to drop one of these accessories. The bandanas will give you 750 energy, a 10% boost in melee, sword, and gun damage, along with an 80% movement boost. The capes will give 750 health, and then the rest of the buffs are the same as the bandana. These next two accessories, the bare ears and the golden sun hat, can only be unlocked by spinning the Death King. If you don't know what this is, basically, the Death King is an NPC at the Haunted Castle, and you can spin for a random item using bones. To get bones, just kill anything at the Haunted Castle, and they'll drop bones. These accessories have a low chance of dropping from the Death King. The Bear Ears will give you 500 energy and an extra 10% defense against attacks while the Golden Sun Hat will give you 500 health and 10% more damage dealt. The next accessory is the Jaw Shield. You can get this by completing five quests from the Player Hunter, located in the castle, which will make you kill five random people in a server. After that, talk to Takamura, who is located on the left stairs inside the castle, and he'll reward you with this accessory. This will give you 500 energy 250 health, a 12% boost in melee damage, a 10% defense against melee attacks, and an extra 50% movement speed. Since there's so many more accessories in the third C left, I'll speed through these next ones. Lei has only one buff, which is 50% more health regeneration. You can get this from killing the Kilo Admiral boss within the Great Tree Island. The next accessory is the Pilot Helmet. Its buffs are 130% more movement speed, 10% more health regeneration, 250 energy, and 250 health. You can get this by killing Stone, a boss in the Port Island, which is the first island you spawn in when coming to the Third Sea. This next accessory, the Pretty Helmet, will give you 50% more movement speed, 10% more melee damage, 12.5% more defense against melee attacks, 250 energy, and 500 health. To get this, 
you'll have to have completed five elite pirate quests. Then go inside the castle and, in the bar room, talk to Lunovan. Don't get mixed up like I did. He'll give you this helmet afterwards. For this next part, I'll be going over four accessories. First, I'll be talking about the shark necklace. The buffs it has are 50% faster run speed, 10% more dash distance, and 25% more damage on sea events. To get this, follow the way I go into this little room where you'll find the shark hunter. He'll give you the option to craft one of three things and one of them is the necklace. Now, for the other accessory, the Terror Jaw, you can craft it just like the necklace at this same NPC. The Jaw will give you 10% more. Sword damage, 10% skill cooldown reduction, 20% defense against sea events, and 200 health and energy. Now for the other two accessories. Go to the other side of this place. I just realized I forgot to tell you where to go. This place is called Tiki Island, and it's to the right of the haunted castle. Head over here, and you'll find the Beast Hunter. You'll be able to craft two more accessories here, the Leviathan Crown, which will give you 12% more melee damage, 35% more damage to sea events, 25% increased health region, a 40% higher sea event material drop chance, and one extra instinct dodge. On the other hand, you have the Leviathan Shield, which costs way more to craft, but its buffs are 15% more. Defense against melee, sword and gun attacks, 30% more defense against sea events, 90% more protection against water damage, and 1,000 health. Now, we're going to head back to the Haunted Castle for this next accessory. This is the Holy Crown. Its buffs are 5% more damage, 5% more defense, 5% higher energy regeneration, 500 energy, and 500 health. To get it, you'll have to kill the Soul Reaper raid boss. To spawn this boss, you'll have to spin the Death King and pray you're lucky, since you'll need the Hollow Essence, which has a very low chance of being spinned. But once you do get it, you'll take it over to this thing and hold out the Essence, and the Soul Reaper will spawn across the island in a room. The next accessory is the Musketeer Hat. The buffs of this hat are as follows, 12.5% more sword and gun damage and a reduced 12.5% on sword and gun skill cooldowns. To get this hat, you'll have to do the Citizen Quest, which can be found right outside the mansion on the Turtle Island. You'll have to be level 1800 before doing this. He'll first ask you to kill 50 forest pirates. After that, talk to him again and he'll ask you to kill Captain Elephant. He's a boss right next to the forest pirates, and he can be pretty hard, so just be careful. After that, he'll say something about a treasure. Instead of finding it yourself, I'll show you exactly where it is. From the mansion, head straight. Once you get to these mushrooms, go to this wall and blow it up with a move or something. Once open, there'll be a chest, and you'll get the musketeer hat. Now, you've probably noticed that throughout the entire video, I've been wearing this one accessory. And that's the pale scarf. I wear it because I love the way it looks. And it has some pretty good buffs. 15% more blocks fruit and sword damage, 2 extra instinct dodges, and 10 times the regular instinct vision range. To get this, you'll have to kill the Cake Prince or Doe King raid bosses. To spawn the Cake Prince, you'll have to defeat 500 enemies around the Sea of Treats. And then, in the middle at this house, talk to this NPC, and there will be a teleporter which will let you fight the Cake Prince. Also, I'm sorry if the editing has been pretty lazy right now. It's 12 a.m. for me, and I've been working on this video for a while. So, if you've enjoyed so far, leave a like and subscribe. It takes two seconds, and it would help out the channel a lot. This next accessory, the Valkyrie Helm, is pretty tough to get. Its buffs are 15% more sword damage, 600 energy, and 600 health. To get this, you'll have to defeat Rip Indra. To spawn this guy, first, you need the God's Chalice, which can be acquired through elite pirates or finding it in a chest. 
Once again, I talked about this in my other video, so go watch it. You'll also need all three legendary aura colors, so white, red, and pink. It's highly recommended you do this in a public server, since not a lot of people have all three aura colors, so it's easier to find them in a public server, and Rip Indra is a very hard boss to beat, and it's only beatable with a large amount of players. And if you're wondering, here are the aura buttons. White is around this pillar, to the right of the spawn. Red is on the opposite side of the white button, by this pillar over here. And pink is all the way at the top of the center building. Once you have the buttons activated, put the god's chalice in the pedestal inside the center building and Rip Indra will spawn. Now, for these last two accessories, the Kitsune Mask and the Kitsune Ribbon, I really don't know anything about them since they are pretty new and I haven't played Blocks Fruits much recently, besides when I make a video. So, I'll be going off straight facts off the fandom page, so sorry if I get something wrong. First, you'll have to find the Kitsune Shrine, which only spawns during a full moon and in the Danger Zone, level 6. When it spawns, you'll have to collect 15 or more Azure Embers. Once done, turn those in and you'll have a chance at getting one of these two accessories. I'll let you read the stats, since honestly they are really long, and it would probably be annoying hearing an AI voice say all those words. But yeah, that's every single accessory in Blocks Fruits, all the way from C1 to 3. This video took me basically an entire day to make so if you did enjoy, please leave a like and subscribe. It would be much appreciated and it means a lot. Thank you, and see ya.